Hi everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to make these amazing marshmallows from home. That's right, you can make marshmallows at home and I'm going to show you how to do it. It's so easy. In the bowl of a stand mixer, we start with a half a cup of cold water and to that we're going to add three packets, which is two and a half tablespoons or 25 grams of unflavored gelatin. We're going to let this sit and bloom, which is just a fancy word for soak up all that water. So while this is sitting, we can go ahead and make our sugar syrup. So to a small saucepan, I've added a half a cup of water along with a cup of corn syrup, a pinch of salt, and one and a half cups of granulated sugar. Now the reason I add the liquids first is I don't want the sugar to touch the sides. If I can get away with it not touching the sides, then I don't have to worry about crystallization, nor will I have to worry about uh, stirring this the entire time. And that's really what you want. So set this over medium heat, leave it alone, do not stir it until it comes to a boil. And we start at medium heat because we want that sugar to dissolve before the entire thing starts boiling. So I've sped this up for the sake of the video, but it takes about 15 minutes or so for the whole thing to be done, the entire sugar syrup to be done. Um, now that it's started boiling, you can clip on a candy thermometer and stay in the vicinity. vicinity. You don't have to um, just stand over it continuously, but I'd be watching it every so often until it comes to 240 degrees Fahrenheit. And anybody can do this. I used to make candy when I was 12 years old. I'd get my entire family involved in making taffy and I would boil a sugar syrup on the stove and use a candy thermometer. If I can do it as a 12 year old, then anybody can do it. <laughs> So now that that's ready at temperature, I start the mixer on low, mixing the gelatin, and I'm gonna slowly pour in the sugar syrup down the side. And I'm specifically hitting it down the side, as you can see, so it doesn't hit the tines of the whisk. Because if it hits the tines of the whisk, then it's gonna spray everywhere. And for one thing, this is 240 degrees of hot, hot syrup. And another thing, it's just gonna spray on the sides of the bowl and not go into the gelatin like it's supposed to. So just slowly add that in. And once it's all added in, you can crank up the speed to high or medium high and just let it go. It's gonna take about seven to 10 minutes of whipping. So you that's why you really need a stand mixer for this. You could do it with a handheld mixer, but it's gonna take longer and you're gonna be standing there switching back and forth between each hand because your hands are gonna get tired. So um, stand mixer, again, it's an investment. I've had this one for like 25 years, so they last a long time and they're well worth the money. So in the meantime, I'm gonna show you how I do my vanilla. This is homemade vanilla extract and everybody makes their own vanilla extract, right? It's just uh, liquor and vanilla beans. Now I learned this from Ina Garten, who is like the queen of baking and everything. Um, what she does is she leaves the same vanilla beans in there for a long time, keeps adding the vodka, in our case, the gluten-free Tito's vodka, preferably, um, or rum. And over time, they get like a paste, a vanilla bean paste. So when you squeeze out the contents, it's like a vanilla bean paste. See that? You don't need to buy a jar of expensive vanilla bean paste if you're already making your own vanilla um, extract. So that's just a great tip I learned from Ina Garten and I do it constantly. And eventually I replenish the vanilla uh, beans in the extract, but I always leave the spent ones in there because there's just still so much flavor to it. So this is done now. As you can see, it's nice and thick and oh, so good. I love marshmallow anything. I'm just pouring it into a prepared like I think it's a seven by 11 or seven by 10 inch. I'd prefer to use that because it gives me thicker, taller marshmallows. And what I did is I spread butter over the entire surface and then I combined a uh, two to one mixture of um, powdered sugar and cornstarch and that will help it from sticking. 
but you got to be quick about marshmallows because they will instantly set up if you don't get it to where you want it to go. So once you've got it all in the pan, then you can try your hardest <laughs> with this um, offset spatula or whatever to get it perfectly smooth on top. I'm fine with it being a little rustic because then they look more homemade. So when you're done with this, take whatever's left of your cornstarch and powdered sugar mixture and just sprinkle it over the top, all over the top. It's going to be messy. It's fine. I like to use a little sieve for this just so it's nice and fine. And the hardest part of making the marshmallows is letting them sit overnight. So these are going to sit completely overnight until they are firm enough to cut. Because if you try to cut them within like a couple hours, they'd just be messy, gooey, and stick to the knife and just impossible. So you have to wait overnight at least. You can wait longer if you need to, but take the entire slab of marshmallows and put it like I like putting it on a silpat like uh, nonstick baking sheet, but you can um, also put it on wax paper, parchment. Um, you're going to have that powdered sugar mixture everywhere when you're doing these and just, you know, go with it. It's fine. <laughs> it can easily be cleaned up. So when you start cutting these, realize that you need a bigger knife than you have <laughs> and find your bigger knife. I always use this really long chef's knife that I've had forever and it's great. Um, my dad got it for me from Cisco back when they had their restaurant. And spray it if you want to with nonstick spray. You don't have to. It just makes it a little bit easier. And you can cut it into whatever size marshmallows you want. I'm just going to cut a few strips so I can show you how easy it is to cut. And then from there, I make um, kind of large marshmallows. But again, you can make them as big or as small as you want. That's the beauty of making your own marshmallows. And y'all, that is it. Like I said, if a kid can boil sugar syrup, a 12-year-old, then you can do this easily. And if there's any of the leftover um, cornstarch powdered sugar mixture, roll these around in it because the cut surfaces now will be sticky. But see how nice and soft these are and squishy. Oh my gosh, they are to die for. And the vanilla beans sort of pop when you eat the marshmallows. You can like kind of crunch on them. Oh, they're the best vanilla bean homemade marshmallows ever. You are gonna love them.